Simplicity is about subtracting the obvious and adding the meaningful. John Maida. My friends, things are going in the right directions on our short trades, both on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, even still with bonds. We closed out that gold trade yesterday. Let's jump into these charts. Now, you noticed how dry we were for a while with the five charts that we track every day, particularly the four because Bitcoin's still in a stall pattern down at the bottom of the charts. But when it came to the two stock indexes, gold and bonds, there was little movement to track. We did have some successful trades. You can see this one back in, what was that, uh, mid-August. But then with the S&P, we had to wait for things to set themselves up again for us, which they did on this latest one, and we are engaged in that. But doesn't mean there aren't hundreds of other things to potentially trade. That's why we always encourage you, pick out your favorite stocks and ETFs, backtrack those, show to yourself that they are trackable, which is the number one thing for actually charting. If, if you don't find something that's chartable, if it doesn't move enough or doesn't move in discernible patterns that you can track, well, you're wasting your time. So again, we have trainings on that, but let's talk about where we are on these latest trades. As we look at the S&P 500, we had the STC move all the way up and then roll over. It's below the 200 EMA, bounced off that. We initiated that buy signal back in the morning on the 14th. And you know, when we track these things for you, we always take the absolute worst jumping in point. That's usually what we do. It's what we did here just to show you that again, we're looking to gain 3.70%. Uh, people ask always, what are the strategies? Should I sell a portion of my position at any point? You know, again, these are things for you to practice, for you to decide what it is you want to do and how it is you want to do it and what works in your schedule, in your practice. And again, as you practice with your particular ETFs and stocks that you're interested in, you will gain specific knowledge on those ETFs and stocks because you have traded them over time through different seasons. You understand how they work during the summertime trading zone, during the transition zones, during the fall winter trading zone. You know how they react around things like earnings. You know how they react at certain times of the year, around holidays, around any number of of events that you track over time that you keep up with because every time you do a practice trade, you do what? You keep extensive notes. What's happening that day? What are you thinking? How is the trade setting up? How is it progressing? What is happening with the STC? What's happening with the candlesticks, with the price movement? All those kinds of things so that you can after action learn from both your successes and mistakes. I will tell you, you will learn more from the mistakes than you do the successes. Sometimes you just get a great run of luck. Nothing to do at all with anything you're learning. But when you start having problems, that is where you really learn. So what are we seeing here? Maybe we're not learning all that much because things are moving in the right direction. So pay close attention. We're in the green zone. We want to keep that. We don't want to lose it. But at the same time, we would like to take full possession of that 3.70%. Some of you have a rule that you go ahead and sell half when you hit the first, that is ATR times one, which in this case, the ATR that we started off was $7.25. And of course, when you see that in your move, then, well, it would actually be 1.85% which is half of the 3.70, of course, because we have a two to one risk to reward ratio. You can do that, then you can let the other half ride. We talk about all those things. You can set those up for yourself, however you wish to do it. You can take your profit whenever you want to. Our rule is two to one risk to reward ratio, but it's your house, it's your rules. Practice, learn, modify, put into action. That's where we are on the S&P. We look at where things are with the two-day. It's still going down. Nice, good two-day candle. We look at the weekly, and of course, the weekly is still above the 200 EMA. You can see it down there. 
we have a bigger red spinning top. Uh, we had a smaller one when the week started. And again, that means some indecision. So do again, keep your eye on things. We are above the 200 EMA on that weekly chart. When it sinks below it, of course, we would be in solid bear territory. So we'll wait, watch, and see. I can repeat about everything I just said on the, the NASDAQ 100. Sorry, wasn't coming to me as quickly as it should. Coming from the S&P 500 to the NASDAQ 100, the tech stocks, what are we looking to gain here? Well, 4.59%. We're halfway a little over already. And of course, that's beautiful. We're risking 2.30%. Things, like I said, are moving in the right direction. We initiated that trade on the morning on the 14th, just like the S&P 500. That's when the STC went from green to red. We're below the 200 EMA. Again, same thing on the two-day and... The weekly looks about the same as it did on the S&P 500. These charts don't always run the same. This time, very similar. So that is where we are in our stocks. Keep your eye on these trades. See how they start the week off. If they keep moving in the right direction, if you see candles go to green, you might take what profit is left there. You know, again, keep an eye on all the charts all the time to understand what's going on. I always, too, like to take a look at my volume. And I noticed that my volume peaked up on the buy, so on the green side. So I am going to be paying close attention to what happens on Monday morning. We don't talk a lot about volume I, again, I try not to add too many things into this decision-making process. If, you, if you'll just follow the simple rules that we set up, two-to-one risk-to-reward ratio based upon the average true range right here, you follow the candlesticks, you wait for an STC crossover either down for a short trade or up for a long trade, my friends, and again, using, you're looking for up trades if you're above the 200 EMA, you're looking for down trades like here if you are below it. And you might say, but Tom, how do I make money with the Qs, the NASDAQ 100 going down? Well, we teach on that also, but here's a quick little tip. In fact, I'll put at the end of today's program, just for you guys, the training we have on inverse funds, how to make money when markets crash. P, Papa, Sierra, Quebec, is the short fund for guess what? The NASDAQ 100. And lo and behold, my friends, it has been going up for the several days that the NASDAQ 100 has been going down. This is what you call an inverse fund, a short fund of the Qs. Now, it's something you need to practice trade. It is not the end all to be all. The fees are higher. It's rebalanced every day. It can kill you if it goes in the wrong direction. And you need to practice trade it to understand how it really works. It is not just magic. It does require a little bit of sophistication because it is a short fund. It's set up to move in the opposite percentage of the underlying asset. In this case, the underlying asset's the Qs. If you look at something like SH, that's the single inverse of what? The S&P 500. Again, that's the way if you don't have knowledge of options or you don't want to get into options, this is a, an option for that. If you do want to know about options, Become a Patreon member. You get our three-part series, Options Made Simple, the Charting Wealth Way, the minute you sign up. Now, as we move to 20-year bonds, let me show you the 20-year bond short fund. That is TBF, Tango Bravo Foxtrot. That is the opposite of TLT. And you can see where <clears throat> it's been going up. Let's, in fact, look at where our trade is in that as 20-year bonds have been going down. We initiated our down bond trade back in the morning on September the 1st, went sideways, then hammered down, and then a little more. It went down again in the morning on the 2nd, in the morning on the 6th. Oh, that's right, because we went, we went from Friday to the new week. And then as we watched throughout the course of the week, we saw things move sideways and we had a new week initiated. Things popped down again and then moved up a little and then down again on Friday. We got very close 
to getting out of this trade on the 13th. Some of you did. I know it got close enough for you and you took it. That's fine. Others stayed in. It is moving in the right direction. We'll keep our eyes on things. Down for the day, 0.83%. So we're still in that trade. Where are we on the two-day? Two-day is negative, looking quite nice. We look at the weekly. It has just gone negative over the course of this week. So that makes us feel good, even though we went into the green, as you saw on the STC. Not something we usually stay in. Why did we stay in? Because it went green when we were in the green and we had the weekly rolling over at that time. So I made the decision to stay in it. So far, so good. We will see how things continue to move along. You might say, Tom, why did you make that decision? It's called experience. There are rules and there are times to absolutely 100% follow the rules. There are other times when you don't follow the standard rule. <clears throat> how do you learn when to and when not to? It's based upon your experience. And you will get that by being with us 10 to 15 minutes each and every day. <clears throat> Excuse me, bit of a frog there in my throat. Let's talk about where we are on gold. Well, had the same thing happen recently. Gold rolled over on the 14th in the morning. We jumped in, went down a little further in the afternoon, and then boom, cleared us out with a profit the next morning, down 1.58%. We captured that short in gold quite well. You might say, Tom, what's the inverse fund in gold? There is something called, if I remember, DGZ. That is an inverse fund in gold, but the problem with DGZ is that it is very illiquid. In other words, there is a big spread between the bid and the ask. So when you get in, you have a lot of ground to make up. I am not a big fan of trying to make that ground up. So what do I do? I'm going to short gold. I short it with puts. You can do the same. You can practice DGZ and see if it works for you. I don't, I, I don't give you guys advice, teach you what I know, ask you to apply it in practice, see what works for you. And when you decide to use your own money, you use it as you see fit. I don't take on that liability. Now, stock calling service not a gold calling service, Bitcoin or bond calling service. We're an education firm. <clears throat> practice, 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 practice. Perfect practice makes perfect. So that is what we did in gold. Successful down trade there. Gold is now up for the day a little bit, 0.55%. That's okay. What you find when you do the two to one risk to reward ratio, when things work for you, they typically work for you quite well. Once they end, could you have gone a little further like we saw in the trade back on the 15th of August? Yeah, it did go down more. And then what did it do? It cranked right back up to actually higher than where we got out on the trade. So again, things. the, the reason we do things is because they typically work. When things stop working, we find other ways to trade. What we're doing now is a modification, of who knows how many times over, from the way I originally started. The market changes constantly. We have to change with it or get left behind. That is why we're in the market every day to learn from it. We see the two days still heading down. I'm sorry, that was the, the half day was heading down. Two day is, of course, heading down. And check out the weekly. Check out the weekly in gold. We have the candle penetrating the, and this happened over the course of this week. We have the candle penetrating the 200 EMA. We're in the red. Be interesting to see if we continue to plummet below that. Look at this low here. Or if things bounce off on gold and start to go up like they did back on the weeks beginning the 11th and the 18th of July. Maybe they do. Maybe gold just heads south for quite a while. I want gold to go up because I plan on buying a lot of gold when it does, but it's not right now. Now, let's move from gold <clears throat> and our top four ETFs that we've tracked for many years to Bitcoin. And what's going on with Bitcoin? Down for the day, just a little bit, 0.68%. You see we're down in the morning, recovering a little bit in the afternoon. But again, 
Bitcoin struggling. Um, and you know what? That is not correct. Let me find this. God, this is hard to see. Um, okay. I was looking at the weekly there. Down in the morning, a little further down in the up. Not hardly any movement at all. I was like, I knew that candle pattern didn't look right. Because we had those three run-up candles. And then we had things edge over and move down. But the reason I wanted to start off on that weekly chart is I wanted to show you this. Let me tighten it up. You can see where Bitcoin has headed down, slid sideways. It was up four candles and then down. And this week is, again, if I broaden that up, you can see we've, we ended up last week red spinning top, this week green spinning top. But what's really important is we landed on that week beginning the 6th of September and the 27th of June. We landed right there at about the 1820 mark. So are we making a bottom in Bitcoin? I can't tell. I would like to think that we could be. Uh, of course, anything's possible. We're still negative on the STC. On the two-day chart, it is in positive territory, but with all this, this sideways sliding, that means literally nothing to me. Remember, the STC is a combination of stochastics and the MACD, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator. What happens to the MACD when you have sideways sliding, when you have a market that is not trending? You get very inaccurate results, and that's what we're seeing here. Uh, what I am paying close attention to, if I go to my 24-hour chart, and I'm looking at where we are in relation to the 200 EMA. We're well below it on the two-day. Where are we on the weekly? Look at this. We're still well below it. We're hitting these potential bottoms in here but we're still below the 200 EMA. Now, when we look at the half day, and again, back on this, you know, there we go. That's where I had seen that pattern. Down and then up. Okay. Makes me feel better that I'm not losing my mind. Uh, we see this is the 24-hour chart versus the, the, the futures chart, which is XBTF. This is XBT. This is Bitcoin trade over 24 hours. And we see that it too is below the 200 EMA. So what do we need for Bitcoin to move back in a direction we were, where we would consider purchasing it? Well, we want Bitcoin to do this. We want it to clear the 200 EMA on the half day, the two day, and then slowly but surely the weekly going from bear to bull. That is what we want to see. And right now, I'm not buying any Bitcoin at all. Got excited when it started moving up for those four weeks, but then, of course, moved right back down to the same territory, lost it all. So let these charts set up for you right. Don't get greedy. Hogs get slaughtered. Be smart. Folks, that's where we are. Answered a couple of your questions yesterday. Send me more of them. We will try to hit them during the show. I love to hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com. Hope that you have a great weekend of rest and recovery. Get ready to be sharp next week. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.